Welcome back everybody. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. All right, y'all. It's been a while. I got I got the legend himself back to visit with me for a while. I got Mr. Jerry Mitchellick here with me. Came down to visit and hang out with us a little bit. We thought it'd be a lot of fun to show you his new competition, uh, JM940, uh, which is a greatly improved uh, version of the 930 JM series, as well as, you know, a good take on the po popular 930 series of shotguns. Jerry, how's life been treating you? It's really, really good, Eric. I appreciate you having us in today. Uh, in, the, in, the, in the industry, we always say enhancements instead of improvements, so it's, it's more gentle. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, but, but anyway, yeah, what, what Mosberg has done here, uh, I shot the 930 for a number of years in competition, as you, you, as you know, and uh, what was really trick about Mosberg, they're really good people to work with as a shooter. I actually had engineers come to my property. We were sitting at the kitchen table taking guns apart and writing notes and doing this and that, and this is what they came up with. The final solution is the 940 JM Pro, and uh, it's really an exciting gun. It's, it's got what everybody had wanted in this gun, and they put it here. That's right. You know, a lot of those tiny changes that as you're competing, as you're playing around, you're shooting stuff, you're getting out there and you're putting in the work and you're finding what works and what doesn't. Right. And over yeah. time you go, you know what, I'd like to change this a little bit. I'd like to change that. I noticed uh, this one has the over travel screw right. adjustment yep. that you added to your 930. And of course, you know, a bunch of other things such as this, you know, this feed mechanism here yeah. that yeah. you <laughs> welded up yeah, and everything. Yeah, that's, yeah home built. <laughs> that's so. right. Yep. Definitely slim right here on the belly of the 940. Yeah, that's one of the, one of the big things in uh, shotgun competition. It, guys quad load and they twin load. And the forearm on a standard gun like this, you see how high it's above the, the receiver. So when you, when you try to do, excuse me, when you do the loading, it just gets in the way of the other shells in your hand. So the big enhancement was a redesign of the gas system and the forearm and the receiver to where you can make this very compact. And when you buy it out of the box, it's actually ready. It's ready to play. It, it's beveled. It's got the uh, magazine follower exposed a little bit. So when you tweak the last round in, it's going to go past the shell catch. And you notice the forearm is very compact. Uh, it's, it's made to shoot fast, oversized bolt release, bolt handle, and the trigger stop, of course. And that's how it ships, just like yeah. that. Yeah. What, what also what we wanted, uh, my wife does a lot of ladies training. And one thing for smaller statue people, or most ladies, they need a shorter buttstock. So they made this one with a set of spacers in it. So when you buy it, you can adjust it for length to pull about five eighths of an inch. It also has a drop kit where you can drop the stock or raise it and also give it cant, which they never had before. Now Mossberg had at one point, uh, they came out with that flex system. So it's kind of a similar type of thing where you got the, some flexibility, I call that flex. Yeah, definitely. So you can tune this to the shooter. And that's a, that's a big thing about a shotgun. If it's not looking where, you, where your dominant eye is looking, it's never going to shoot right for you. So this gives you some, some adjustability to get it on target. And the, the gas system has been enhanced. It's got uh, really nice features in the gas system to make it run like 1,500 rounds before you need to do any maintenance on it. So like earlier, you, you were mentioning, it's kind of mm -hmm. like the AK of shotguns, like right. really robust, it really is. dumb and, you know what I mean? Like dumb and deliberate, like everything in it's just really beefy. It is. I've... I've I'm trying to think of a part that I've broken in one, and I can't remember ever, ever, uh, ever having a part break. Usually, what I do through my on my guns is like periodically, like once a year, I'll do a uh, a spring change. Okay. I'll just come in and change the spring, the firing pin, and everything. So other than other than that, uh, I run them pretty hard. Oh well, yeah. So I put a lot of use on them and uh, crack it open. You know, put put some new springs in it. Yeah. Maybe pour a Budweiser down the barrel yeah, once you know, a year. Once or twice. Yeah, probably this, essential. This is one of my play guns, so I had Magnaport put some porting on it, which is not legal for a limited division, but it just makes it a more uh, easy gun to shoot. Okay, so this one's so, Magnaport. I was going to yeah, ask you about yeah, the porting. Yeah, so yeah. this is not a standard feature. No, this is actually the uh, Jerry Mitchell like Magnaport. Oh, okay, for, the for special right, one. Yeah, for a right-handed guy, there's, there's more ports in it. You notice there's two rows here, and on the other side, there's only one. So if you're right-handed, it keeps the muzzle back to the left. There so you go. You can shoot it really fast. Now, what kind of choke are you running here? Well, they actually come with Briley chokes now. They okay. They come with a set of three Briley chokes. Uh, you get an IC, a uh, bod, and a skeet. So Very it, cool. It so it comes with, with three sets yeah, of chokes. Yep, yep. And then the cool. magazine extension, this is Mossberg's factory article yeah, that, that, is, that yep, they run? yep. Now, I noticed from between the 940 and the 930, now this mm -hmm. 930 here also has the magnet porting. 
Yeah. Uh, you've also got a much bigger magazine extension on this yes. gun. So do, do you run the big mags on the 940 as well or just the 930? You can. This is the way it comes from the factory. Okay. And of course, I, I kind of put this one together. This is a 15 round. All right, those Nordic components. This extension. is a Nordic component uh, magazine extension. So when I travel, okay. I'll take it apart right here, put it back in a bag where you can actually put it in, into a gun case. But uh, can I show you the gas system? Yeah, yeah, thing? let's check it out. And that's a 24 inch barrel? This is a 24, yep. It you comes, think that's a happy medium for yes, barrel length? It, yes, it is. It actually comes in two different finishes. It comes with a cryptic camo, or the, the finish you see here. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out right quick. The, after the spring so it doesn't go you know i do like fly. that you can see the follower also because that's that's great for safety as well when you need to confirm that something's empty yes, you can really get a good visual yeah. you know check on that follower color code it for that there you go oh. this one's pretty dirty i actually use my guns <laughs> i use them gotta get out there and shoot guys it's important <laughs> in fact i haven't taken it apart in so long now the texture i notice <laughs> on this four end is definitely, you know, you notice like the, the texture on the 930 JM and then my, my 930, the texturing is almost like a hunting shotgun would be in a way, like that kind of old school checkering. It looks like they added much more functional they you know, did. grip they, there they on the side. They made the, uh, the checkering uh, a lot more aggressive. Yep. Uh, that looks good. The big thing on the early guns, the gas system was so efficient, it would trap a lot of the, uh, the wadding, the uh, melted plastic inside the gas ring. So about every maybe 500 rounds, you'd have to service it. This one, they intentionally made it totally different. And you can shoot three, four, five, six times the ammo without actually servicing the gas system. So, so it doesn't trap as much of that water. It doesn't. It doesn't. So it, it uh, different pusher, a ventilated pusher. And this assembly is different also, the final. So it's... Uh, all, all this is very, very, very much to the model here. This won't interchange in this. These parts will. Right. And that's a uh, titanium nitriding? Uh, yes. On all of these? Uh, I think so. Very uh, cool, man. Yeah, so it's... Uh, it's that really helps with lubricity, and that probably helps, you know, you can just wipe this thing off pretty easy. I imagine yeah. the carbon doesn't really stick to that too bad. But this is one of the enhancements that you wouldn't think would, would make a difference. But it's, it's like a car muffler. You know how you start your car and it drips water? You shoot a few rounds and it would condensate under here. With this opening like that, it has a, it, it has a tendency to dry a lot quicker and the gun stays serviceable a lot longer. Just little little subtle things that when you get out when you get a gun out into the field and you shoot it a lot, you see you need you need to do some corrections. So yeah, this was absolutely. Uh, this was all good stuff. Absolutely. And you can see I've shot this one and hadn't cleaned it forever, so. <laughs> actually hard to take it apart. I love the design. I, I love how, how they slimmed up that four end and got it, you know, kind of made it up with the receiver, just make everything more streamlined and, you know, not getting your hand in the way when you're trying to load it. Um, another thing that I would kind of notice about this uh, as well is all the enhancements, you know, when we talk about the wadding and everything, you know, kind of, and the fouling and all of that wadding plastic getting into the gas system and things, uh, that's a problem that, you know, generally you're going to have with about any shotgun, but I feel like maybe it's, it's maybe slightly worth mentioning that, you know, you're, you're asking a modern platform to work with ammo that, you know, the 12 gauge round's been around a long time. I mean, shotgun shell's been around for a good minute. So you're dealing with kind of old school technology and then trying to bring it into modern propellants and, you know, modern wads and all of these things. So those developments, you know, it, it comes at a price, you know. One of, the, one of the things that I'm really proud of, Fieldkeep is my ammunition sponsor. And when, when they took me on as a, as a pro shooter, they asked me what could they do better. And the first thing I suggested, you need to take their shotgun slug, your series of shotgun slugs and put a coating on them. Because a shotgun slug is probably the most worst fouling round you can put in a shotgun. Because you've got a pure lead projectile, no coating, and you're shooting it at 1,600 feet a second. And it comes in, when it goes past the ports in the barrel, of course, where the gas system works, you get such a, a load of lead into the gas system. It's, hardly, it's really hard to make a system that's going to stand up to a lot of slug shooting. Yeah, it leads. So with a, with a coating, it's totally different. We did some video where we did some high-speed shooting with coated versus non-coating, and it's just uh, unbelievably better. 
I've heard of some people, you know, taking a, like powder coating their bullets and stuff like yep. that to yep. try to, you know, help with a little bit of the leading. And yep. what occurs with the leading is, is, is basically it's gas cutting. And what's happened is those hot gases are going around the edges of that projectile and it's stripping off lead as, you know, because of the pressures, right? And when you get into cast bullet shooting, I mean, I won't get into this because it's, it's a different thing, but you know, the softer the lead, the easier it's going to lead and, and gas cut. That's when you get into hard uh, alloys like linotype mm -hmm. or hardball and getting that Brunel hardness on up there in terms of casting, you can shoot those lead bullets at a much higher velocity. But fitment is the issue here as well as a soft lead. It's like a combo. It's it a is. disastrous combo in that. So that was a big enhancement, a coated shotgun slug, but the, the gas system here can run three to five, six times longer than the other series before it needs any maintenance. So it means a lot to me. I was actually taking this gun out and shooting it and not cleaning it on purpose just to see if it was gonna, if it was gonna foul. And uh, you can see I haven't cleaned it in forever, so pretty pretty happy with it. Now, in terms of the gas system, you know, not having to you know have to do as much maintenance as often. Uh, in terms of lubrication, just lube it like anything you would. Yeah, or you run it, you know. What do, what do you lube it with usually? Uh, hoppies. Okay. They're they're top of the line oil. I put okay. on it and uh, then take but a few drops. That's one thing about oil. You don't need a whole lot to do the job. Uh, yeah, don't guess, overdo it. Yeah, don't overdo it. But uh, I usually pull the bolt out and do all uh, all the inside of the bolt on the locking lugs and, and of course in, in the uh, the rails of the receiver and let it go. Uh, one thing I, I try to do periodically once a year is to take the buttstock off and take the spring assembly apart here and give it a little maintenance. Sure. And uh, that's about it. It is ready to play. But really about all, all these things are going to go through springs and that's any gun's going to go through yeah. springs eventually. And, that, and that's one thing, you know, this, this monster tube here, this, if, if I can go for a year with this spring, it's going to be really good. Shotgun magazine tube springs take a severe beating. You've got 15 rounds on that spring and every time you fire it, that ammunition stack wants to go forward and it's really beating that spring up. So a lot of guys don't realize this is a, this is a dated product. It's an expendable. So first thing I look for when I'm getting a problem on the last few rounds out of the magazine, it's usually that this spring is past the service life. Yep. I've, I've shot them enough to where, <clears throat> excuse me, I could actually, uh, I could actually close the gun and feel it. That's right. You know, if you feel you, your spring is soft when, when it's at rest on an empty tube, it's time to give it another one. That's right. So, And to be clear, guys, in, in case some of you don't know, if you've never had to respring a shotgun, and turn, especially magazine springs, they're not that expensive. I mean, you, you can respring them for pretty reasonable money. You're not talking like an astronomical expense. I was looking at his barrel here, and I noticed, like, those gas ports are pretty generous on this thing. It is. Yeah. And that's one of the things I like about, a, about this gas gun. I can shoot a super light load with it. Yeah, it's got a, really generous gas ports. I shoot a one ounce at eleven fifty, and it'll 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 cycle it all day. And even when it's dirty, it'll run with it. So in three gun, what I find is a lot of guys they they shoot ammunition that's way too powerful for the job. Okay, it's just like if I if I can knock a target down with a nine millimeter, why am I going to shoot it with a forty five? All you get is going to be more pain on me. That's right. And more the, recoil. Yeah, more recoil. Know. So the lighter ammunition, the faster you're going to shoot. This thing will, will run the little light loads reliably. And it really, it's kind of like a trade secret. I don't like to tell everybody that. but uh, Well, I think you just told I, quite a few people. I, I try to wean <laughs> up as much as I can on the ammo and still get the job done. So. That's right. Now, uh, in between competing and stuff with your barrels, do you, do you do any kind of, do you pull the barrel and swab them from time to time? Yeah, I've got a chamber brush. Uh, yeah. You can buy a brush to clean the, the gas system too. Mm -hmm. Brownell sells a, cham a uh, gas system brush for our Model 1100 Remington. Fits this perfect. Also a chamber brush for the, for the chamber. So that's the two critical parts on a, on a, on a, on a, a gas gun. Cham that's right. Chamber of the gas system. Yeah, so. if you've got some imperfections or buildup or any, any issues going on with that chamber, you're going to have extraction issues. Always, yeah. Yeah, because that cartridge, guys, it has to expand and contract. And if you've got imperfections or garbage in your chamber or some type of an issue, uh, it's going to present itself, especially as hard as this guy runs his shotguns. Uh, you guys have got to make sure you go and subscribe to Jerry's channel and check him out. He's got a lot of great stuff going on. He is a great dude. And I know the COVID has put a pinch on competing, so you just shot your first competition in a long time, right? right? We sure did, yep. How'd that go? It went pretty good. I was high senior, so I went in kind of... COVID it up and I haven't been shooting or training and uh, survived it enough to be top five. So 
Oh, yeah. There I am. That's awesome. <laughs> well, um, you know, as soon as we can get our hands on a 940, we'll definitely make a video. And you'll, you've probably been seeing some, you know, footage of Jerry shooting his 940, but this is a fantastic shotgun. And I've actually have not even been able to get my hands on one of these until today. I mean, Jerry brought his down nice enough to show it to us and everything. I love the coatings. I love, you know, the texture on the bolt handle. I love the big, you know, uh, bolt release is really nice. I love the over travel stop for the uh, trigger. I mean, that's a nice functional upgrade and that's alloy trigger guard, right? Yeah, well, not plastic yeah, or anything. That's alloy, okay. yeah. yeah, I know like some of the cheaper Mossbergs have like the plastic trigger guard. So definitely when you get into it to a JM, you're going to get, you know, an alloy trigger. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's got, you know, with the gas system upgrades, that's really cool. The buttstock is a big thing too. The, the way you can adjust it to fit the user. This is a great, a great upgrade. I think it'd be cool to throw, you know, just a basic rail on that thing, a little red dot or something, like the way you've got this Venom set up on your 930. So it'd be a great home defense gun too, you know. What's interesting, you know, you said it, put a red dot. If you if you run the uh, the Venom, uh, you can buy a base from. Uh, uh, what's the name of the company now? It's a it Burris Burris Fast Fire base for a Marlin 336. Fits right on here, and you can put your your venom right on it. Awesome! So well, that's, that's good what to I, know. That's what I run on that one there. So I kind of came up with that on my own by luck, because I was hand making a base, then I found that for thirty five bucks, and I had ten hours in the other one. I said, "This is a whole lot easier, guys." Yeah, so. I know. It only costs like twelve <laughs> bucks, and there you go. <laughs> yeah, so I spent ten hours making one and have them in a catalog. That's right. So it's the that's same right. a half inch spacing as a Marlin three thirty six. Good to know. Well, uh, guys, definitely. Appreciate you tuning in for today's video. And Jerry, I really appreciate you, you know, hanging out with us. I know it's been a long time since we've been able to make some videos together because we're both just so crazy busy. And I know your schedule's busy, but um, we have more stuff on the way. Uh, we don't really know what we're going to be doing, but we'll come up with some really cool stuff for you guys. It might involve shooting through some things, so we'll nah. see. <laughs> Very good. It might be fun, but definitely check out Jerry's channel. He is a great dude, and he is one of the world's fastest shooters. And definitely a stand-up guy one of the best guys out there and uh this has been the 940 jm go pick one up if you can find one i've i've been trying to s score one of these things but right now guns have been a little bit unobtainium yeah you know uh certain things going on make things a little bit uh <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> difficult yep yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um you know definitely <laughs> check them out guys thanks very much jerry thank you so much You're welcome. many more videos on the way guys we'll see you soon have a good one